The following has been developed by state and provincial agencies in association with the Agency for Instructional Technology. Together, serving education. $19.20. $19.20. That was sure we had more. That jewelry box is the perfect present for Granny. Yeah, but 40 bucks. Let's just figure out how much more we're going to need. Get me that pad and pencil. Here. I hear you mom's baking the birthday cake. Yeah. Chocolate? Uh, I think so. Okay, here goes. We want to buy a jewelry box that costs $40. We have $19.20. How much more do we need? More means add, so that means we need $59.20 more. $59.20 more? Do you know how long it took me to save up $10? We're finished. Might as well think of another birthday present for her. I can't stand it. Almost $60 and only one little week to get it. I said, maybe we should buy her another birthday present. There's nothing as terrific as that jewelry box, and you know it, Arlene. We can't give Granny some dumb little present. She's going to be 80. I think I'm going to leave the planet. Jenny, something here doesn't make sense. Yeah, being poor doesn't make sense. I mean, something's wrong with the problem. How can we end up needing more money than the jewelry box costs? Sometimes when you've got a problem, it's difficult to figure out exactly what that problem is. Well, we're going to show you some steps you can take when you're sure that the clues are there in the words, but you just can't find them. Did you hear Arlene's question, how could they end up needing more money than the jewelry box costs? Let's see if they figured it out. All right, if you really think you can figure out how to get more money just by writing it all down again, go ahead. We want to buy a peach satin jewelry box, and it costs $40. And it's a music box when the lid's lifted, and it has a ballerina that dances to the music. And it's lined in white velvet. Wait a minute. Why are you writing all that stuff down? We have to write down what we know. And what we know is that the jewelry box costs $40, and we have $19.20. And we have to find the difference between what we got and what the jewelry box costs. Difference? The difference between them? What? Difference means subtract. So, that's not going to give us more money. Well, let's just try. Things sure can't get worse. What would you say if I told you we needed $20.80? Are you sure? Let me see that. Hey, that makes sense. 19 is almost 20, and 20 and 20 is 40. I know I can get two babysitting jobs this week. And I can get an advance on my allowance. Well, it looks as though Jenny and Arlene are going to be able to buy their grandmother that beautiful jewelry box. And did you see how they solved their problem? First of all, they eliminated the unnecessary information, the details about the color of the box and the ballerina inside, by asking themselves, what do I know and what do I need to know? Then when Jenny used the word difference, it became clear that they had to subtract. And when they did that, they found they didn't need nearly as much money as they thought they did at first. Let's tackle a word problem to see how those two questions can apply. John and his father are driving to the country to see his aunt and uncle. Their farm is 120 kilometers from John's house. It's a nice day, but the weather forecast calls for a snowstorm later that afternoon. They've already driven 70 kilometers in their blue car, and John's hungry, wants to stop for a hamburger. How many more kilometers do John and his father have to drive to get to his aunt and uncle's farm. Is it important to know whom John and his father are going to see in the country? I don't think so. Does the fact that there's going to be a storm affect the number of kilometers they have to go? It doesn't matter what color the car is. Does it matter that John is hungry? Mm -mm, not at all. Looks to me like what's left is what we know. So we've stripped away the unnecessary information. And what we need to know is, how many more kilometers do they have to go? What would you do with this information? Well, I'd take the distance they have to travel, and the distance they've already traveled, and subtract one from the other. And bingo, that solves the problem. 
Now let's take a look at another problem and see how Andy and Paul deal with it. Oh, man. Brown hens, white hens, eggs. I'm never going to get through this one. Can you believe it? Uh-huh. Suppose a farmer has 85 white hens, 79 brown hens, and 36 black hens, all in the same hen house. And suppose the 85 white hens lay three brown eggs each per week. The brown hens lay two brown eggs each per week. And the 36 black hens lay four brown eggs each per week. How many brown eggs does the farmer get from his hens each week? So, what's the answer? Are you asking me? I don't see anyone else in the room. What I can't figure out is why they put problems like this in a mathematics book for city kids. What I can't figure out is why they have to be so long. Oh, why can't they write problems about computers or music or, uh... Dream on. It's not going to solve your math homework. Maybe I'll add all these chickens together and multiply by... Yeah? By what? Two, three, or four? Maybe I'll be sick tomorrow. Oh, that's going to solve everything. Maybe your kid's sister can go in and pretend to be you. Got any better ideas? Paul and Andy seem to be getting exactly nowhere with their problem. The mathematics shouldn't be too difficult for them, but they're both bogged down in the farm setting. It seems to me if they tried to look beyond the farm setting of their word problem, if they focused on something more familiar, they might be able to understand what the problem is. Let's see how they're making out. Will you cut it out? Making those dumb noises will not get you answers. Why don't you pretend that all those hens and eggs are 10-speed bikes? Or a TV show? Oh, man! You're a genius! Yeah? Yeah, look. 85 trikes with three wheels each. 79 10-speeds with two wheels each. 36 two-wheelers with training wheels. Hey, this is easy. How are you doing, buddy? Oh, I made a list. It's making sense. What'd you do? Heading number one, what do I know? It isn't often that chickens and eggs turn into bikes, but if that's what works, why not? Paul was stopped in his tracks because he lives in the city, and he doesn't know anything about chickens and eggs. So he changed the setting of the problem to one with which he's more familiar. And you can do that too, if it's the setting of the problem that's confusing you. But you must read it very carefully to make sure that the situation you create is parallel to the situation in the problem. Um, basically, in my job, I try to go through all the details and eliminate what is not necessary and try to extract the important things. Um, I've been an interior designer now for about nine or ten years with my own business and uh, basically what I want to do is to try and guide someone into making the right purchases for their particular home. I want them to pick what they want basically but guide them so that they don't make any large mistakes. What I basically try to do when I first see a client is to go to their house and see what their lifestyle is like, to see what um, pieces of furniture or items that they have that are personal that they wish to keep and um, basically to try and sort out the difference between what they really want and what they really need. Well sometimes it's really uh, you really have to be uh, very careful. Um, if you have two kids sharing a bedroom and each one has their own likes and dislikes, their favorite colors, what they want to hang on the wall, you'd have to try and be very diplomatic and give them both what they want and yet still have a reasonable design and something that the uh, parents would like too. Um, I was just at a house the other day and um, I went through it and it, it, it's the whole house. I mean, it's the living room, the kitchen, the bathrooms, this has to be changed, wall treatment, carpeting, uh, you name it, everything's going to be done in this house. And when I left the house, I thought to myself, oh my gosh, this is so much. I'll never remember everything or I'll never sort it out. So I, I came back to the office and I sat down and I went through and I made a list of each area. And basically it was to sort it out and to get it straight in my own mind that it really wasn't so overwhelming as long as I took one section at a time. 
and dealt with it that way. I constantly find myself saying, what do I know and what do I need to know in order to solve this problem? You mean our moms do this every week? Yep. Hurry up, Mark. We have to get the rest of the stuff. I don't know which package to buy. Look. This pack has 10 wieners in it, and it's on sale for $1.98. But this one's only $1.08. Yeah, but it only has six wieners in it. Sure. But maybe we should buy two of those instead of just one with 10 in it. What are we going to do? I don't know. It's really hard. Well, let's see. If we could figure out how much one wiener costs in the package of six, we'd know which package was cheaper. Yeah, that might work. So what do we have to do? I know. The pack of six costs a dollar eight. That means we have to divide a dollar eight by six. I'll do it. The answer is 18 cents each in the six pack. Now that we know that each wiener in the pack of six costs 18 cents, we have to figure out... Oh, I'm lost. I know. Look, we have to figure out whether a package of six wieners that cost a dollar eight is a better buy than one with ten in it that costs a dollar ninety-eight. But I already knew that. Yeah, but now that we know how much one wiener costs in the six pack, what we have to do is figure out how much ten of them will cost. It's a cinch. We'll multiply eighteen cents by ten, a dollar eighty. So two of the six packs would be a better buy than the package of ten. <laughs> That was pretty good. Mark and Sharon figured out what they had to do by finding a relationship between the cost of the package with six wieners and the one with ten. When they first asked what's the better buy, it didn't lead anywhere. What did the question mean? By restating what's the better buy in their own words, Mark and Sharon could understand the problem, and then they could do the computation. We've looked at how asking what do I know and what do I need to know can help eliminate unnecessary information. Then we examined the idea of changing the setting of a problem. Remember how Paul was able to turn hens and eggs into various kinds of bikes? And we saw how another way to identify the problem is to restate it in your own words so that you really understand it. So when you have a problem and it isn't exactly jumping off the page at you, you can ask yourself, what do I know and what do I need to know? Or you could try changing the setting of the problem. Or you could simply try restating the problem in your own words. Just remember, it's much more difficult to solve a problem if you don't know what the problem is. MathWorks is a component of the Mathematics for the 80s project and is supported in part by Exxon Education Foundation. This program is produced by Sailaway Productions under the supervision of the Agency for Instructional Technology.